is gathered here on purpose. So we say, speak to our hearts. Speak clearly and plainly. Somebody needs to hear a word from you. How do I thank you now for your anointing falling fresh in this place. That your people see none of me but all of you. Lord, we'll be careful to give you praise, to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, somebody, put your hands together and give God some praise. Amen. I want to switch. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number Isaiah chapter number 61, very familiar passages of scripture. Can you help me thank God for the Mount Zion Baptist Church family? I believe the greatest church this side of heaven. In fact, everybody from Mount Zion, will you please stand? I want Pastor Scotty to know, amen, that you are here. Amen. Zion Knights are here. Amen. So certainly we thank God, amen, for you being here. And there are some downstairs in the overflow. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Let's go right into the Word of God. Isaiah chapter number 61. Very familiar passage of the Scripture. I want to begin reading at verse number 1. King James Version. You will find these words. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified verse 1 again says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek I want to use for thought just for a few moments, I'm anointed for this. Can you stretch your hands toward Pastor Scotty and say, Pastor Scotty, you, sir, are anointed for such a time as this. I'm anointed for this. Beloved, growing up as a child in New Orleans, Louisiana, my mother, she made us go to church every Sunday. There was no if you want to go, if you feel like going. I know things have changed in the 21st century with some parents, but when I was growing up, we, we had to go. It was, it was get up, be ready, because everybody in this house were going to church. And Pastor Scotty, we grew up in the kind of church that wasn't afraid to celebrate God. Yeah, uh, They weren't afraid to shout. They weren't afraid to get loud and dance. As we would celebrate God, we had no shame in our game. Whenever somebody would celebrate God hmm, to what we believe would be the highest point, somebody would holler out in the congregation, let the Spirit of the Lord have his way. Because we understood that there is something about celebrating God that is tied in to his Holy Spirit. However, I am mighty afraid that some of us have limited God's Spirit to simply celebration and celebrating. So when we say let the Spirit have his way, we think that the only thing the Spirit does is make somebody shout. <laughs> and the Spirit can and will make you shout. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that is not the only work of God's Holy Spirit. Isaiah says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, and he has anointed me. Hmm. It's here that Isaiah begins to explain to you and I what happens when a person is under the anointing of God's Holy Spirit. 
To be anointed simply means to be set apart. Can the church say set apart? It simply means to be sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. It simply means to be set aside. When I am anointed by God's Holy Spirit and set apart and sanctified, Pastor Scotty, I want you to understand that long before this day, you, sir, have been anointed, sanctified, set apart, and set aside by God for this particular work, for this particular service. Now, everybody in here, it is important to understand that we have at least one spiritual gift. Somebody say, one spiritual gift. No one Christian has every gift, but at least every Christian has one gift. So when the Lord God sets you aside and he anoints you, it is important to know that we don't all have the same work. We don't all have the same service. We don't all have the same task. That's because we do not all have the same spiritual gifts. Are you listening to me? You, my friend, have been sanctified and anointed to operate in the gift that God has given unto you. I'm since scripture is always better understood in context, allow us mm, to look at the context for which Isaiah the prophet is speaking. Isaiah is speaking to a group of people who have just come out of bondage in Babylon because of their sin, because of their disobedience. God allowed King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army to march into Israel, to march into Jerusalem, to tear down the walls of Jerusalem, to burn down the gates of that wall, and to destroy their homes. And they left the temple of God in ruins, but they took a group of Israelites back into captivity in bondage in Babylon. They, they were there for, for at least 70 years. And after 70 years of bondage, they have been released. Somebody shout yes. And now they are making their way back to Jerusalem. They're making their way back to Israel. And as they are getting settled in, that's the group here that uh, the prophet Isaiah is ministering to. That is the group of people that uh, the prophet Isaiah is prophesying to, and he is telling them, watch this, whenever you've been in a battle, whenever you've been in bondage, he's telling them, he's prophesying to them, whenever you've been uh, dealing with bad experiences, you are going to need God's Holy Spirit. And more than likely, I am preaching to somebody this evening that's been in spiritual warfare. And I know you don't want nobody to know what you've been through. You don't want anybody to know that you've been through battles and you've been through struggles, but I've got some good Holy Ghost news for you, that when you began and to operate under the anointing of God's Holy Spirit, some great things are in store for you. So, Pastor Scotty, the Spirit of God is also upon you. He has anointed you to do a few things that I believe this text is tailored to teach us. I'll lift them up and I'll take my seat. Number one, we find it right from the text. When the anointing of God, the Spirit of God is operating and we are flowing under that anointing. Watch this. It is not so that you and I can be seen nor glorified, but it is to bring proclamation. Can the church say bring proclamation? I want you to know that you are anointed to proclaim the good news. You are anointed to proclaim the good tidings because whenever you are under the anointing, there ought to be some proclamation. Whenever you are under the anointing, there ought to be some proclaiming of the gospel, which means you are anointed, watch this, to say the same thing that God has said. And there is power. Anybody know that there is power in the spoken word of God? For the Bible says in the beginning, in Genesis 1 and 1, God created the heavens and the earth and the the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be and there was so there was confusion and there was chaos but the spirit of God moved and God spoke and brought order out of chaos tell somebody there is power in the spoken word and remember in the New Testament in first Corinthians it says that we have the power the authority the ability to speak those things that are not 
as though they were to proclaim to proclaim good news somebody say proclamation there must be some proclaiming and the anointing of God is upon you sir to proclaim now watch this to proclaim the good news somebody say good news now proclaim is to good news what complain is to bad news listen whenever you find somebody and all they do is complain and don't look at me with that tone of voice because everybody knows somebody all they do is complain that's why somebody is not sitting next to the person that you normally sit next to because you said this is one night I refuse to listen to all this complaining every time they complain about this it's too loud it's too hot it's too cold but is there anybody here know that when your life is filled with bad news all you will do is complain everywhere you turn there is bad news if you read the newspaper you will come across some bad news if you listen to the radio you will come across bad news if you go on Facebook or on the internet whatever you do there will be bad news after bad news after bad news and I'm not saying don't be relevant I'm not saying don't know what is happening in your community in your country or in your world but there is not a day that goes by when I'm looking at all of the bad news that I'm surrounded by that I don't open up the Word of God because for every bit of bad news God has given us some good news can the church shout good news I want you to know that no matter what you've been going through that there is some good news to battle the bad news that you've been going through so I made up in my mind that folk can complain about the bad news but I shall continue to proclaim God's good news because when I look back over my life I've had some good days yes and I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days and some lonely nights but when I look around and I think things over all of my good days they outweigh my bad days so I won't complain sometimes I should but I won't yeah other people's do but I don't because God's been good to me I wish I had some witnesses up in here that know God's been good to you more than this world could ever be so I won't complain but through it all I lift my hands and say thank you Lord and somebody from Miles Chapel and Mount Zion or wherever you from ought to lift your hands and say thank you Lord I won't complain I may not have what I want but I have everything I need I won't complain because he's been good to me when you are under the anointing there is some proclaiming some proclamation but but God has anointed you sir not just to bring proclamation but to bring healing yeah Isaiah says he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted I want you to know that you're not here like any other preacher you're not here you are here God has sent you to bind up the brokenhearted that's healing somebody say healing and I'm just tired of preachers playing I'm just tired of pastors playing too many folk are hurt and broken y'all talking and for, for us to come in play in the pulpit but somebody needs a healing can the church shout healing uh, he has sent you to bind up the brokenhearted now I know that we don't like to talk about this anymore but here's what brokenhearted means it means that he has sent you Isaiah is saying he sent me to bind up watch this open wounds uh, can the church say open wounds Remember now the context. Isaiah is speaking to a people who have been battle torn and battle worn. Watch this. They have gone through one battle after another. And anytime there are battles, there will always be open wounds. You ain't getting this. Watch this. But he says the spirit of our God is a healer. Yeah. He is the God that heals. And he comes to bind up. Because one of the worst things that you can do to an open wound is leave it open. Y'all ain't talking. You need to bind it it up can the church shall bind it up and the spirit of God sir is upon you just like Isaiah to bring healing and to bind up open Y'all know we're not even doctors, we're not even paramedics, we're not even nurses, but, but we have enough sense that if somebody has a gash in their arm and it's bleeding, even, even you and I with no medical background, we know that all you really need to do is apply some pressure on that thing to stop the bleeding so, so they won't bleed out. Watch this. So we bind it up. And yes, the pressure is going to hurt you right now, my God. But is there anybody here know that sometimes God has to hurt you now to heal you later? I don't know who I came to preach to, who I came to talk to. You've been hurting, and I know you're looking at me like I'm crazy because you don't have any physical open wounds, but all, oh my God, all wounds are not physical. There's some of you with emotional, psychological, and mental wounds that are still open. That's why 
you don't know how to relate to others because you're still tripping over somebody that hurt you emotionally in your past and you're walking around and hurt people hurt people but is there anybody here know the Holy Ghost the anointing will bind up the broken I dare you to ever give your hurt and your pain to God and say Lord I've been hurt I've been wounded but I refuse to hurt somebody else I refuse to pass on what they did to me they may have hurt me but you are healer is there anybody here know how God is a healer tell somebody he heals me he heals me when I'm hurting he heals me when I'm broken I dare you to high five three people and say God's a healer yeah, 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 yeah. To bind up you, sir. The anointing of God is upon you to bind up open wounds, my God, so folk won't bleed out. Because if you go, watch this, here's the issue here. You're going to have to stop the bleeding in somebody's life. And it's going to keep you, watch this, from being contaminated and infected. Yeah? Because if you would be honest, my God, some of us have gone through some things and somebody's suffering through something right now and you're contaminated everybody you touch you contaminate everybody that gets around you get infected with what you have but I want you to know that I refuse to leave out of here without receiving my healing this is more than just some ceremonial service that's going on here the power of the Holy Ghost is in this room and I dare you to reach out and grab your healing Here's what, okay, here's what, here's, I know y'all, 21st century, let me get some old schoolers in here. Here's what Big Mama used to say. She used to say, God is a heart fixer and a mind regulator. You had the same Big Mama I had? Is there anybody here know that no matter what you are going through, when you bring it to God, he'll bind it up. He'll wrap that thing up. He'll minister to you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I got two more things to tell you, and I'm out of here. Number three, watch this. He has anointed you. The Spirit of God is upon us. See, we think the Spirit comes to make us just shout and dance. But when there is the anointing, it brings proclamation. It brings healing, but it also brings emancipation. Can a church shout emancipation? Isaiah says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has sent me to bring freedom to the captives, to release those who were prison house in darkness. Wait a minute. I thought you said that Isaiah was already ministering to people who had been delivered out of bondage. Watch this. They have been saved. But even though they've been saved, evidently, they are still captive to something. Going in there. Yeah, yeah. That's why you can never be judgmental because you're not going through what somebody else is going through. Yeah, yeah. Because there's something that you still need God to bring you out of. There is something that you've been locked into, but the Spirit of God is in this place, my God. And He comes to bring about emancipation. Jesus said that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, here's our issue some of us have been delivered, have been saved, but we're still in bondage to something else and, and 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 there is something called can the church say obsessive compulsive behavior obsessive compulsive behavior Watch this, watch this, watch this. Obsessive, that's, that's the mental, that's the mentality. Uh, uh, compulsive, that's the behavior. Obsessive, compulsive behavior. Watch this. It is when you keep doing something that you really don't want to do. You know it's hurting you, but you keep doing it. You know it's bringing you in bondage and keeping you bound, but you keep doing it. You keep hanging out with them. You keep going back over there like Pookie. You need a fix. Y'all ain't talking up in here. But is there anybody here know that? That God will not only save your soul, but I'm going to talk to some real folks. See, I ain't got time for these cute Christians that stand up and tell these cute testimonies. I thank the Lord for being here first, giving honor to God, and act like you ain't never been through anything. I want to talk to the real folk that say, I used to be strung out. I used to be outdoors. But when I gave God my life, he came in and delivered me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He brought me out, and now I am free. Somebody shout yes. Here's the fourth thing I need to tell you. The anointing spirit of God is upon you. This is more than just a ceremony. You need to understand that God has anointed you to bring comfort. Can the church say comfort? Verse 2 says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the death.
day of vengeance of our God. Here it is to comfort those who mourn. <laughs> now remember these people in Isaiah have been through bondage. They've been through bad experiences. They've just come out of battles. In other words, there's some crying. There's some mourning going on. There's some depression that's going on. But the anointing, somebody say the anointing. The anointing comes to comfort, to bring comfort. Watch this, that word comfort. Somebody say comfort. It comes from two words, come, which means to show up and fort, which means to fortify. When the Spirit shows up, my God, when God's anointing shows up, that's why every time you stand in the pulpit and Mount Chapel, whenever your man to God is getting ready to preach and teach the Lord, I need your Holy Spirit, the comforter to show up and strengthen and fortify. Is there anybody here know that the Holy Ghost will give you the strength that you need? In the New Testament, Jesus told his disciples that if I don't go away, then the comforter will not come. He was speaking of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word is the paraclete, uh, the helper, translated the comforter. It is the, one of the names for the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if I don't go away, then the paraclete, uh, the comforter, the one that shows up and strengthens, will not come. Para, which means to come alongside uh, and fortify you, to help you deal with your battles, to help you deal with your struggles, to help you deal with whatever you've been going through, which means this, watch this, that God will come through. God will come and comfort you. The parrot, it's where we get our word, paramedic. Can the church say paramedic? Now, you may not understand how the paraclete operate, but you understand how the paramedic operate. The paramedic operates like this. When you are sick and you are broken, and since you can't get to the doctor, you call 911, and the doctor comes to you. Y'all ain't kidding. I'm trying to tell somebody that that's how the Holy Ghost is. When you are operating under the anointing, it doesn't matter where you are. You ain't got to wait till you get to church to receive your comfort while you're in the kitchen cooking your greens <laughs> while you're in the bathroom somebody say come comfort and some of you right now you've been waiting for him to show up but you ought to stand and prophesy when I get to work he's going to meet me in that office when I get to work he's going to meet me in that cubicle when I get to work he's going to meet me on that assembly line or whatever you may be doing when you, when you show up the Holy Ghost is already there why? because greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Tell somebody, say, he'll show up. Won't he give you strength when you're weak? Won't he give you strength when you don't know how? And you got to proclaim the good news. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Now watch this. Now that's all principles. But, but I love this because take your seat. I just need to share something else with you and I'm done. Watch, watch what Isaiah does in verses 1 and 2. He gives us the principles of what the Holy Spirit does. He anoints, right? He proclaims. He heals. He binds. He sets us free. He comforts. Those are the principles. Now, everybody know me. You understand. I like to use illustrations. I don't need to do that today. Because Isaiah has provided us with some illustrations. He's given us pictures. In verses 3, he gives to us uh, some pictures so that if you didn't get the principles, you can get a clear look at the picture and walk out of here knowing what the anointing is all about. Watch this. It's not just to make you shout, but understand what he says. He says that he will bestow on them a crown of beauty. Uh, verse 3, instead of ashes. <laughs> Y'all missed that. That's an illustration about how, how the spirit moves and what he does. Here's the picture he gives to you beauty instead of ashes y'all these are not real ashes these ashes represents the fact that somebody has been burned these ashes represents the fact that somebody has been burned watch this and even though you've been burned you don't have to lose your mind because the spirit of God is here and the spirit of God will give you beauty instead of ashes y'all when Babylon marched into uh, their place they walked back from, uh, from Babylon uh, the children of Israel they marched out of Babylon got back to Jerusalem got back uh, to their place in Israel they discovered that everything had been burned down they discovered that the walls had been burned down the houses had been burned down even the house of God had been 
and lying in ruins. So these are people that have been burned in their community. There are people that have been burned, watch this, in their own house. And these are people that have been burned as it relates to the house of God. And more than likely, I'm preaching, I feel God in this place, to somebody that's been burned by friendships. I'm preaching to somebody in the back. You've been burned by some kind of relationships. Your husband burned you. Your wife burned you. Your children burned you. But I've got some good news for you. God is able to give you beauty for ashes. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to trade this thing in. Is there anybody here you may have walked in here thinking about what you had? But I come to tell you that God is giving you beauty. For you. Tell somebody, say, beauty for ashes. Watch this. It doesn't say he will give you beauty from ashes. Yeah. It doesn't say that. But he gives you beauty instead of ashes. Yeah. See, we stay in bondage and depression because we keep looking for beauty in the ashes. Oh, God. But, but, but he didn't say I'm going to give you beauty from the ashes. But I'm going to give you beauty instead of the ashes. And if, if you stop tripping long enough over the fact that you've been burned, you will discover that God has got something beautiful right before you. I need you to shake hands with somebody that looked like they came to have church. Grab their hand and say, neighbor, I, I believe I believe the stuff the ashes behind I'm walking away from the ashes and I'm getting ready to step into beauty oh yeah yeah watch this watch this you can't put ashes together and try to make them work why because all ashes are it is the residue of the proof that you don't have what you used to have now I need you I need you to prophesy to somebody, say, and, and if God allowed me to lose it, if I don't have it any longer, it must mean that I don't need it for the next season in my life because he's given me beauty instead of ashes. Yeah, 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 watch this, watch this. Uh, then he says, then he says, I'm almost done. He says, I will give you the oil of joy for those who are in depression. I understand why you've been depressed. You've been in a battle. I understand why you've been lonely and depressed. You've gone through one experience, bad experience after another experience. But here's what the Spirit of God would do for you. Is there anybody here know that he will give you the oil of joy? And I'm so tired of these sad saints. How you been doing? I don't, Lord, I, I'm just a pilgrim traveling through. God has anointed you, sir, with the oil of joy. Ain't no sad. Tell your neighbor, say, ain't no sadness in here. In fact, anything dead ought to be buried. Is there anybody here got joy? In the, I'm not talking about happiness. He says the oil of joy is upon your life because God's not trying to make you happy but what he wants to give us is joy and tell your neighbor say God wants to upgrade you will you let him upgrade you will you let him upgrade you joy is an upgrade from happiness uh, you ain't getting this you making me preach longer than I have to but watch this uh, happiness is based on what is happening and God is placing a spirit in this church, my God, that watch this. We will not be moved by happenstance. We won't just give God praise when things are going good. Look at your neighbor say, that's the external. That's happiness. But notice the anointing comes to give you joy. Because joy is not dealing with the external. But joy is dealing with the internal. So it doesn't matter what I lost. Doesn't matter what happened on the job I will come in here saying this is the day that the Lord has made why because I have joy lost your job but still have joy broke and busted and can't be trusted but tell your neighbor I still have joy is there anybody in here could say like grandmama used to say this joy I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away is there anybody here know the joy of the Lord is your strength I dare you to step into the joy of the Lord. Shake hands with somebody and say, step into the joy of the Lord. Now notice, 
Notice, notice, he mentions something else here. He gives us another illustration. He said, and, and, and I will give you a garment of praise. Somebody said garment of praise. And the Hebrew people had all kinds of, of holidays and holy days. <laughs> they had all kinds of feasts and celebrations. And, 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 and you can always tell which holiday it was based on the garments they wore. You ain't getting this. So, so you knew when it was the Feast of Weeks because their garment reflected which day it was. So then you knew when it was Pentecost. You knew when it was Passover. You knew why? Because uh, uh, of the garments that they were wearing. And we can tell where some folk were based on what you wear. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, based on the garments you put on. Watch this. It gives us some idea of where you work, how you make your living. But watch this. Your clothes give it away. And when I was a kid growing up in New Orleans, we only really had three outfits. We had school clothes. We had one for church. And we had one to go outside and now, come on, I know, I, I know that you got it going on now. I know that we're movers and shakers and big ballers and shot callers, but is there anybody could think that we only had three pair of clothes? We had church clothes, we had school clothes, and then we had play clothes. And depending on the clothes you would put on, folk would know where you're going. Y'all ain't getting this. Because if you wore that suit, the black one, yeah, the black one that had the, the, the shine on it, yeah, thank you, Father. And because, because watch this. Everybody knew you was going to church. You go to church with the, if you go outside with the green spots on your, on your knees, everybody knew you was going to play. You came out, you was going to school with your book back. Everybody knew it because of what you was wearing. Watch this. Y'all, when it comes to the Spirit of God, he gives you a garment of praise. Watch this. That even if you don't say anything, folks still know you're praising. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't have to open up my mouth. My life is a praise. I dress like I'm a praiser. <laughs> is there any pray? Are there any praises in the house? Tell your neighbor, say, that means, watch this. When you have on the garment of praise, you're not a silent praiser. You're not one of those praises that don't want nobody to know that you are praising God. But I want to talk to some folk that have on the garment of praise. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not ashamed to praise God. I don't care who sees me praise. I don't care who knows I'm praising. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries. Hallelujah. Where my praise is at. Tell your neighbor, say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And it praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear that and be glad. Touch your neighbor, say, oh, oh magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. You need to check your role. Because everybody didn't come with their garment of praise on. Just look to your left. And look to your right if they still looking mean and evil and hard to get along with that's not a praise but if there's somebody in here can open up their mouth and say this here today that the Lord has I gotta go y'all I can't watch this lastly Isaiah says when you were under the anointing and this is what I came to tell you when you were under the anointing that you will be called an oak of righteousness. Oh, God. He says, sir, I'm done. I can't hit that. He says, you're planted. You're not a wild tree. You didn't just say, I don't need to be up under nobody because God's given me my anointing. But you serve this man. Then you serve this man. Then you serve this man. Until God gave you your turn. You're not a wild tree. Oh, y'all ain't getting this. Tell somebody, say, he's been planted. In other words, there's purpose to what God is doing. That is so, somebody just stretch your hands toward him and say, there's purpose on you. What that simply means, sir, is that you are in the right place. At the right time. The right era in time. The right season for God to do what he intends to do in your life. And eyes haven't seen. 
nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of men yet. Preach something soft. What God has revealed unto you. God, he's revealed them unto you by his spirit. You are, you are an oak tree. Prolific in your production. Oak tree producing almonds. Just come to something, Bishop. The fruit on the oak tree, on the outside, is really because the oak tree has the capability to hold 50 gallons of water. <laughs> so don't be concerned about the fruit on the outside. What you need to be praying for and everybody need to be lifting you up and interceding that God will continue to fill you with the water. <laughs> because, watch this, Everybody that look like an oak tree is not really producing. You hear me? And, and the way we know that you are prolific in your production is the water that we can't see. The times you pray, the times you intercede, the time that you lay before God saying, Lord, show me your way. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. Water is a representation God's Holy Spirit. Stretch your hands toward her mouth. End it like I opened. Say, Pastor Scotty, you are anointed for such a time as this. Preach, sir, when they like it. Preach, sir, when they don't like it. Pastor them when they're hurting. Shepherd them. Lead them when they need direction. Feed God's flock. Feed his flock. And God will cause all grace to abound toward you. Somebody put your hands together and give God some praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody help me bless God. Come on, let's thank him for the anointing. Gifts are good. You're gifted. You're talented. But it is the anointing that's going to make the difference. It is the anointing that destroys every yoke. And God has placed an anointing upon your life. You don't have to be nobody else. God has anointed you to be who he's called you to be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There may be someone here without the Lord Jesus. We don't want to take for granted that everybody here is saved and on the Lord's side. What must I do to be saved? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the Bible declares that you shall be saved. I don't care who you are, where you've been. Jesus loves you. That's you, my friend. You said, preacher, I want to be saved. You can come to the altar just as you are. <laughs> Somebody's going to pray for you. Somebody's going to pray with you. Secondly, you may be here, you say, Preacher, I'm in a backslidden state. I've lost the joy of my salvation. I didn't lose my salvation. But I lost the joy of my salvation. He's able to restore unto you the joy of your salvation. Want the relationship restored and renewed? You can make your way to the altar wherever you are. Maybe you're here, and you're visiting, but you want to be a member of Mount's Chapel. Pastor Elect Scotty Terrain be happy to take you in. The leaders of this church will be happy to take you in. Maybe you need prayer concerning a situation or an issue in your life. There is nothing, absolutely nothing too hard for God to do. According to your faith, it shall be done unto you. Wherever you are, this invitation is for you. I want to ask you a question. Now, all those that are saved, and in right relationship with the Lord Jesus. That means that if God was to come back right now, Jesus was to come back right now, that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going home to be with him. If you can't answer that, don't raise your hand. But all those that are saved on the Lord's side, I need you to lift your hands. And the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And all of God's people said, Amen.